Gumji a gun and pheromones. Oh, this fall out of your anus. No, that's my favorite. <laughs> Just wait. Is it magnetized? What? Icon of innovation. Girl, uh, uh, no, I'm a drag queen and I wanted my um I wanted to have sparkles on my shoes. But you want so. the shoes to continue to be able to be used for other stuff. Well, I had magnetic earrings and so there's there's a magnet between my toes. Minna Luzon, icon of innovation. Are what? you are you willing to put a magnet between your toes to serve a little bit of glamour? You thought you were going the extra mile. Minna Luzon is magnetized from the top of her head to the bottom of her feet. What are you doing for glamour today? Mm -hmm, yes. Bitch. Sitting at home. You're sitting at home in your pajamas trying to judge drag queens wearing earrings on your earlobes look like at, who are you look down at yourself look at what you're wearing you look horrible horrible <laughs> no they're inspired by like crocs you know people decorate the crocs yeah. <laughs> you look great okay, you look really great you look, you look really nice actually yes i was talking to the not you it's the other girl she looks bad but you baby you look honey over gag gagging uh, <laughs> Hello everyone, it is me, Bob the Drag Queen, and I am the host of RuPaul's Drag Race. I am not the host of RuPaul's Drag Race. I'm actually not the host of Drag Race at all. <laughs> Hello everyone, and welcome to the Pit Stop. My name is Bob the Drag Queen, and of course today we're reviewing RuPaul's Drag Race All-Star 7, Episode 5, and I am joined by special guest, Pit Stop alum, Drag Race legend, the original Heather, let's all gag, from Manila Luzon. Hey Bobster, <laughs> Robert, how you doing? <laughs> Great, how are you today? You look beautiful. You do too. You're in your red era. Well, I mean, it looks great on me. Yeah. Most things look great on me. You know, touche, you look fantastic. One of my most, my favorite looks of you that always stands out is your uh, Mastodon look. Oh, with the tusks for the, for the boobs. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's a great way to keep people from hugging you. Mm, the original social distance queen. Mm -hmm. Before y'all was even thinking about it. Now you've done RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars. Mm -hmm. You've done it twice. Yes. You have done RuPaul's Drag Race, a regular season. Yeah, you have to do that in order to do the All-Stars. Yeah. That's just one of the prerequisites. So you've done I mean, if there, have you worked? Have you worked the cameras? I have worked um, on a couple cameras uh, for some of my friends who were making some videos. Mm -hmm. It was a pandemic. We had, you know, we had nothing to do. We, do we, we do. had to make some money. Subscribe. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's finally here. There is officially an all winter season of RuPaul's Drag Race, rumored about for, I want to say years and years now. Yeah, before there was not enough like winners of Drag Race to have a full cast, but now we have 14 seasons. Internationals. And we're including the international queens. All stars. And we're including the girls that lost and then had to like come back and win again. Drag Monday yes, and Trinity. Yes, yes. So, and Shay, preseason, who are you rooting for? Um, I am rooting for all the queens that beat me because I actually got to compete with them. So, so this is Raja? Raja, Trinity, Monet Exchange. Raja, Trinity, and Monet Exchange. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, they you, they have to be great. If they beat, yeah, if they, if they beat, beat me, they must be good. So they should be at least in the top three. I mean, I'm also rooting for the other girls to win too. So everyone? Every, I'm just rooting for them all. I hope none of them go home. And luckily for you, no one has gone home. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and get into this episode. So, yeah. last week, the Vivian got her first ever legendary legend star. Okay. She won the lip sync against Jinx Monsoon and got that controversial assist that no one is talking about. Jada Essence Hall handed Vivian a xylophone during her lip sync for your legacy against Jinx. Yeah, that little prop. It, it helped. It did help. Well, was that like planned? Was she like, here, give me, just hand this over to me during the little chorus? I mean, unless Jada was just sitting around with a xylophone. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. She's random, she could have been. I mean, she could have pulled it out of anywhere. Like you could have pulled it out of her wig, she could have pulled it out of her bra, but she pulled it out of Jada. We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna have to smell it to find out exactly where that xylophone yes, came from. Yes, it smells to... like dirty tights and a lot of extra perfume. Then it's definitely a drag queen. Yes. Well, there's a crime here. <laughs> it smells, it smells mm. like dirty pantyhose and too much cheap perfume. It was a drag queen. That narrows it mm. down to just 3,000 people. <laughs> <laughs> In the WeHo area. So Vivian wins the lip sync against Jinx Monsoon, gets the power of the Platinum Plunger and decides to block Monet Exchange. Do you think this was a smart decision? Well, Monet hadn't ever been blocked yet. Never, not once. She's the only one that hasn't had the plunger yet. Except, Jada Essence Hall, 
who also is the one who pointed out to the room that Monet was the only one that hadn't been blocked. So I'm so intrigued by the fact that she was like, yes. everyone with a star has been blocked except this bitch. And now Jada Essence Hall is the only person by this time in the show who has ah. a star who has not been blocked. Everyone should get blocked. I would be constantly blocking Raja and Jinx because I think they're the strongest. Okay, I would be constantly blocking whoever hasn't gotten a star yet just so that they feel really bad about themselves. <laughs> oh my God. Right? And then, and then giving, like, just like collecting all the other stars. Just like one, everyone just like goes for one girl and they just keep blocking her. That would be horrible. And she's not even doing well in the competition. Kind of brilliant, honestly. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. I, I would block Michelle. Can we get her to not show up tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> Now, top of the episode, this would have been Jinx's second star. Yeah. She is the second girl to get blocked from getting a star. Trinity first, and now Jinx Monsoon. So she only has her one star, all right? Do you think she's annoyed? I mean, I can imagine like it's like when on a regular season of Drag Race, like someone goes home and then the next week they come right back. And then you're like, oh shit. I thought I was one step closer. Yeah. I thought we were at a top five, but now we're back to top six. But she's smart. She knows that she deserved that win, and um, you know she's probably confident that she can get another one. I will say this too, though. It is so easy to get into Jinx's mind. Like you, you could literally be like, get ready to go on stage, and then look at Jinx and go, "You gonna wear those shoes?" And then just walk on stage, and for the rest of the night, Jinx would be looking at her feet, going, "Oh God, I, I probably shouldn't have worn these shoes." Water off a duck's back. Yeah, yeah. The water is not not ducking off the duck's back. Honey. Mm -hmm. the, the water, the, the water is weighing this duck down. Also, Viv has announced that if she would have won, and that yes. was not up there, she's like, I would have blocked you. It's a weird thing to announce, especially in All Stars when there's also a social game going on on top of the talent game. So why would you tell Jinx, who is arguably the strongest one there, that you're gonna block her? Because now she's going to end up back on the top again. We all know. Let's, yeah. let's keep it 100. Yeah. Well, I think what happened is she was thinking, like, if this is a compliment that because you're doing so well that I would block you. And she's thinking, like, as I'm saying this, this is a compliment because you're doing so well in the competition. But no, she should have never revealed her cards. Right. She should have just, like, she could have, if she wanted to say it, she could have done it in the confessional where Jinx would never hear it. Also, bitch, compliment me with words. You're doing amazing. Here's a platinum plunger. Right? You're blocked. So at this point, every girl's got a star except Raja and Evie Oddly. I can't believe it. How do you think they're feeling? Well, I mean, there are eight girls and there's only been five episodes. Someone's not gonna get a star, True. right? You don't wanna be the last one, for sure. So RuPaul announces that this time for the Maxi Challenge will be a graduation commencement speech. Mm. Now, did you, did you graduate college? I did not. I graduated uh, college and I graduated high school. I had to do the high school thing before I could do yeah, the, the, the college Yeah, they normally make you thing. do it that way. Yes, and um, I got an honorary degree at RuPaul's Drag U. So what did you, what, what did, what did you graduate with? Where did you graduate from? I graduated from the University of Minnesota, the Duluth campus. Mm. Up in the north, where it was cold. As Blair St. Clair would say. Mm. How was your graduation ceremony? I remember my parents wanting to go more than I did. And I remember... Um, the art department, we had brown tassels, and I thought that like, okay, I was like, brown tassels, like for the art department. They should be like rainbow, we're the art department. Earth brown, dirt brown. Dirt, dirt brown, just brown. It's, uh, it's chocolate. It's, <laughs> do you like the idea of this challenge? I think so, yeah, it's like, it's fun because it, it's a really nice thing. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad that it's, you know, set up this way because usually it's all about like, oh, let's make it funny, ha 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 yeah. ha ha. Let's read each other, ha ha ha. But this one is like actually has like a really positive message that we I think all the queens had an opportunity to to share with us. How would you have done this challenge? Um, actually, I gave the speech at my high school graduation. What uh, seat did you graduate? Were you, were you were you valedictorian? I was not valedictorian. Were, were you were you someone <laughs> loudly? Suited to someone <laughs> loudly. Were you I was take victorian. <laughs> Take, 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 someone mm -hmm. loudly. So, um, yes, no, maybe. No, I was, uh, my, my class voted for me to, to speak. Well, young Noah, can we get pictures? We can, we can, not. <laughs> no, there's no proof of it. So, uh, was your speech the best one at your graduation? Oh, I just, um, uh, found a speech from Michelle Obama and I just changed a couple of the words. Easy. I did it the day before. So it was pretty good. Uh, was it received well? Yes, I mean the audience, you know, they they were they were tight at first, but they just you know took a deep breath, 
took a whiff of poppers and I slid right in there with my speech. Loosened up, honey. Mm -hmm. Relax, relax your muscles. Relax your muscles. So it's like a mixture of funny, but also sincere. And like, I feel like when you go to a commencement speech, we're looking for a little bit of advice. Yeah. So what's the best advice you've ever received in drag? And who is it from? Oh, um, I don't know, but I will give you some advice. I'll take drag. Some. Me specifically? Yes, you specifically. Drag me. True. I will give you True. some advice. If your feet aren't on camera, take them damn shoes off. Yeah. And save and save uh, the poor cameraman from having to tilt up. No, this is advice. So Peppermint told me years ago, she said the moment you get off stage, change your shoes. I sound like such a nerd this season of Pissed Up. Do you ever play uh, Mario Party? No. Explain it to me. In Mario Party, you get stars. You get to, it's a board game, and then once you get the star, you get to buy a star, right? But at the end of the game, they give out random stars. Now, RuPaul has walked into the workroom and announced that this week's winners will be getting two legendary legend stars, one to keep for themselves, yes. and one to give away to someone else. This is a game changer. Yes, because now there's an extra star in there. And, and, you don't even, star. and you don't even have to do well to get it. That's the cool part. And it's part of the social game. Yes. So think about your, this for a second. You're, you're, Viv, you're the Vivian, right? Mm -hmm. Jada helped her get that win to block the plunger. Yes. Jada helped her. So I don't think that the Vivian would in turn block her back and she might even give her a charity star because she helped her get $10,000. I think that charity star should go to whoever doesn't have the star. So it should either go to Raja or it should go to- Wait a minute, um, on the one hand, you're blocking the bitch with those stars and then okay, you're giving okay, her a star? Okay. Well, that was, like, that was like my dumb strategy <laughs> that would probably get me like kicked off and canceled on Twitter. But this is the uh, idea that might get you further in the competition. Well, you'd wanna have a, an even, even playing field. If everyone has a star except for one person that, and there's an extra star and you can't give it to yourself, then you gotta give it to- You don't wanna give it to someone doing well. Yes, because then you're just giving them a star. It's like pointless that you even block yeah. them. So you're basically the people giving them that aren't that you don't gonna fear. Yeah, the people that aren't gonna get the free star are gonna be the queens that were blocked and still had that chance in the top. So Trinity, she ain't getting no free stars. Nope. Jinx, she ain't getting no free stars. No, 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 no. No, so the stars are just I mean, I don't know. Do they roll over to next month? Yeah, like, I don't I don't know if they're a singular rollover minutes. Oh my god, do you remember rollover minutes? Uh, do you remember when you had half minutes? Girl, y'all don't even know. Back in the day, you back in the day, if you call me before nine o'clock, bitch, we're not friends. Do not call me before nine o'clock. Are you crazy? That's like eighty-seven dollars a minute. Yes, but after nine. But after nine. Oh, bitch, you on the phone, girl? Until the phone battery dies. <laughs> oh my god, the early two thousands. What a time. <laughs> so Raja has decided to do this conceptual character as a cult leader. I yes. want to say right now that if Raja starts a cult, I'm joining. First of all, she's not doing a character. She is just a cult leader. <laughs> <laughs> like she has her own cult. Honestly, mm -hmm. sign me up. I'm joining. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's a good idea to do this like esoteric? Because like a few girls, Jinx Monsoon kind of did a character. <laughs> yeah, but kind of. But then she kind played of a witch. It. She's a freaking witch. <laughs> but then she also kind of like abandoned the idea of the whole witch thing. Which is, yeah. And then Viv did a full on character. Mm -hmm. And Raja also did this full on character. Do you think that was a smart idea? I think so. Because like when you play a different character, like you can, you can kind of envision a character and how that character is going to deliver the things. And it just adds a little bit of flair and a spice as opposed yeah. to just walking up there and just delivering some like words of advice and a couple jokes here and there. Don't you read. think? That was a read. Wasn't it? That was a read. Oh, she was reading. <laughs> she's hooked on phonics, because she's reading, honey. You know, when people who live in Arizona but can't leave, they're hooked on Phoenix. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So, okay, what it goes, she's speaking of Shea kool weeks ago introduced the idea that the plunger comes with powers. But on this episode, it actually does because Monet got blocked. Uh -huh. She gets to choose the order of the show. So there are powers. I mean, like, Shea kool was bull****, but then this episode, the plunger just like randomly happened to come with powers. 
Have you ever had the task of like deciding the order or have you ever had that role in Drag Race? I think so, but I, I was just, I was too afraid. So I just went in order of people standing. Was this for All Stars? This was for my season three. Oh, season three. So yeah. you just went down the line. And it just so happened that the order that they were standing in was, was working to my advantage anyway. So, oh, it, it, you know, you just have to, you know, pick it. So Monet chooses the order of this show. She puts herself first, okay. which she acknowledges is a very tough position. Well, when we competed on All Stars 4, we did the roast, mm -hmm. and she got to choose the order as well, and she chose herself for the first spot. And it, it worked out for her in All Stars. On All Stars 4, do you remember where you were in the lineup? Were you like in the middle? I was last. And yes, Monet put me last, girl. Because Monet was, Monet was gunning for you. She Yes, she was gunning for me. So do you think girl. she has it out for the Vivian? Because she put the Vivian last. I mean, come on. This is, I mean, why not? Do you feel like Monet's like really strategic? I think Monet is, um, as she would say, petty. So <laughs> petty, she, petty so, LaBelle. Pe petty LaBelle, yes. Well, I will say this, Monet is better at All Stars than she is at Drag Race because All Stars she has She won this... and Drag Race she lost. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah, we get it. <laughs> All the queens are workshopping their commencement speeches with Carson Kressley and Nikki Glazier, who looks great, by the way. Yes, I love her. So after rehearsals, when you're watching, who do you think is gonna do a good job in the ceremony? See, I don't really know. I mean, I'm assuming that Jinx is gonna kill it. Monet should put her in like the worst spot ever. Um, right, and Monet put her second to last, which is a great spot. Why would Monet wanna set Jinx up for success? That is wild to me. She needed to keep her as far away from her as possible, mm -hmm. but, but without putting her last. And still to... setting up the Vivian. Yes. Oh, you might be, okay, that's, that's, that is very smart. Let's go into our graduation ceremony. All right, these commencement speeches. Who stood out to you? Like, who was the one that stood out? You were like, ah, this. Shea Coulee, like, stood out to me immediately. And why was that? First of all, she looked phenomenal. Always. She always looks phenomenal. Every time. But this time specifically, because she didn't have to look phenomenal. Like, yeah. some of the girls are, like, literally wearing, like, you know, robes and gowns and caps. But she, like, comes out in couture. And then she tells an amazing, uplifting story. And I was a little bit taken aback at first when she started doing her speech because I was like, where, where are the jokes? Yeah. And then I was like, oh no, this is not necessarily all about the jokes. It had its sense of humor, um, but it also had a really important message and it really told a story about her and her life coming up. Yeah. And it made me connect with her even more. So she was definitely a standout for me. There was humor injected in it, but it wasn't too thick. It wasn't too much. Yeah. She didn't overdo it, which yeah. I appreciated as well. For me, the two that stood out were the winners, Jinx and Raja. I mean, Jinx had a great callback to getting hit by the car, which was so funny. <laughs> it's, it was really smart. Uh, Jinx is just a really good writer. She's very clever. And same with Raja. Raja, in my opinion, this should have been her third challenge win. I think Raja has consistently proven throughout the season that she's one of the funniest queens, but she's kind of giving that, um, that uh, Got Mick, uh, Aquaria vibe where everyone just knows Raja for fashion, but they forget she's very funny. Yeah. It's it's one of like the best things about her is that she doesn't take herself seriously ever, despite the fact that like she takes herself so seriously with her yeah. drag and what she does. She understands fashion on on like a Anna Wintour level. Yeah. But she also understands comedy on like a you know Chris Rock level. Yeah, because at deep deep down she at heart is just like a goofy kid. So what do you think about the Vivian's performance? I thought it was phenomenal. Like, I, I, I wasn't quite sure because, like, all the people that were picking characters, like, picking a drunk character, I feel like has been done before and it hasn't been always successful. Mm -hmm. And it could be a crutch. But the Vivian surprised us by, yeah, it was a small part of the character. Yeah. But she had jokes, she had stories, she had the message, and it was actually very well done. And I was pleasantly surprised, especially coming after Jinx. Mm -hmm. I thought she was just gonna bomb hard. The Vivian can hold her own. She's very good at it. But it, again, it's just really hard specifically to compete with Jinx. She is truly a world-class comedian. Yes. And Viv is too. Who do you think did the best overall? Ooh, Who is the winner of the uh, Jinx. Jinx did the best. Mm -hmm. You know, it was effortless for her, I feel. Raja really was up there, but Jinx, the callback to getting hit by the car was just so smart. Yeah. Because I got hit by a car. And it just, she's very good at humor. Yeah. 
so category is Veiled It. Veils on the runway. Yes. What do you think of this category? I like it because you don't have to look at any of these bitches' faces. Drag them. Ah. Ah. <laughs> cool. Yes. So let's go with each one down the line. We okay. have Monet Exchange. So this is definitely uh, an Alexander McQueen reference. It's done really well. Really The only well. thing I didn't really like was the random red veil that she yeah, had over the cage. I feel like she just grabbed some fabric off the, the off wall. Tr off Trinity's? Probably off of Trinity's. Like, you know, she's like, hey, can you spare me an extra yard of that fabric? So they won't clock me and say it's not a veil. Exactly. But also, but maybe it was the idea that when you put a veil or a piece of fabric over a cage, the birds go to sleep. You ever had birds? I have birds, and I do put a, a veil over their cage. So what kind of birds? Shut up. They're little budgies, little parakeets. They're what are their names? Um, Blanca and Is she Rio. white? Blanca's white. And what's um, the other one's name? Rio, because it's short for Amarillo. He's yellow. Yellow. Well, our first ones that died were blue and green. They, they passed away. Were they Azul and they, um, uh, Birdie? No, they were blue and green. Oh, their names were blue and green? Yes. And they were blue and green? Yes, we were so original. So then we got, they died from having such basic names. So then we got new ones and named them um, Spanish basic names. And we put veils over their cages. So I get that. What, also, what are you name your children? If I had children, mine would be mistake and mistake again. <laughs> I like this look because there is a cage veil. Yeah. So I like the idea that it's, it's a cage. It's a different take on the veil from everyone uh, yes, else. I think yes, it's the most yes. original one. Up next, we have Shea Coulee, who's doing a love letter to her grandmother in her garden. Beautiful layers of silk fabric, all pleated, which you know costs extra. Yeah. You can't just iron that stuff. You can't just buy fabric like that. You have to go get it done. So I love it. Like anything she wears, she just makes it into fashion. It looks great. It looks really cool. I like that the veil kind of has like little like things you throw over yeah. your shoulders. Up next you have Trinity the train. Girl, trains on train. This bitch wants to Girl, run a train. She is Amtrak the house down, honey. How is she fitting these in her Do they have are they allowed more suitcases now? Whatever store she bought her fabric at was giving her a discount. Everything must go. <laughs> the crazy thing is about this is that this veil was attached to her head yes. the whole time. This looks so good. I like that it would also be all like a Zamboni machine. Yeah. And she like would sweep it up afterwards. Leave a place know. nicer than you came. Yes, exactly. You Very know. considerate queen. So yeah, she looks pretty beautiful. Stunning. This is, she looks really good in red. I, I think she looks phenomenal in every single runway. I, I'm always excited to see what Trinity is wearing. It's so uh, glamour, it's so over the top, and like she did not come to play. Yeah, she looks so good. Up next we have Raja. Raja, who Raja. is a magazine cover. I live. I've never seen anything like this on the main stage. I always expect Raja to go over the top with yeah. this kind of So I think people forgot that Raja is very good at drag. Even like the veil and the look itself was just so exquisite, so fashion, so timeless, but so like current. I loved it. I think we have Jada Essence Hall. I like this look. I think that the fabric wasn't sheer enough to see her face, so she just looked like a black blob yeah. for the most part. She, so yeah, it's I, giving oil spill. Because it is so wide, it's casting a very wide net, literally. And it's a really, really weird silhouette. Up next, we have Evie Oddly. Ah, love this. I don't know if this is hand beaded, but beading is so expensive and so hard to do. I actually really like this look. It's very Evie. It's very, uh, Evie's drag is always like a little bit covered in mud. Does that make any sense? It has like a little bohemian vibe yes. to it. Like, yeah, you can definitely see her like dancing around in the desert, Burning yeah. Man in this outfit. It's always, sure. a little, it's always a little Burning Man. A little Burning Man, but like at Burning Man, she is the only oh, goddess. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, up next we have Jinx Monsoon. Nah. This one was fun. I love the concept. It's very Jinx. She's always kind of like ethereal and butterfly. Mm -hmm. Definitely a forest, forest creature. Yeah. For sure. She's a Tim Burton character. Yes. In, I imagine in, she lives in a crooked house. All of her friends kind of look similar. I, I kind of wish that she had done the, the reveal of the veil a little sooner, because I or the veil that she had over her face was a little bit more sheer so we could see her. Because she just kind of looked like she was walking backwards a few times. Yeah. You know, like, but I do like the, the little butterflies that were like holding up the veil. It reminded me of like a little Disney princess. I, I love this look. I didn't need the front veil. Because the back veil is really the gag. Yes. It also is too opaque. 
it, you can't see her face. Yeah. And, and, and this is the first time anyone's ever been like, we gotta see Jinx's face. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we have the Vivian. I love this look. I think it's brilliant. I think it's great. I love the fabric that she uses because it mm -hmm. is like a sheer, sparkly, like elegant dress. And then it's got these harnesses in a similar color and it's, it's really beautiful. I, I want her to hop though. If we're gonna go bondage, go full. I want her to hop down the runway. I mean, I know we've seen it before, but if you're if you're gonna be bound and you're walking, how bound are you? You know what I mean? I mean I guess maybe maybe she should have been in a swing, and they should have just swung her down the road. Or in a full d suit and just have someone from the pit crew drag her. Drag her. Just drag her latex body. <laughs> no, um, I, I like this. I do wish that there was a bit. Maybe it's because I'm colorblind. I wish there was a little bit more contrast between the belts and the gown, so I could see them better. Who had your favorite look? Raja. 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 She had the best look. Raja killed it. Everything about this look is beautiful. Yeah, I agree with you. And you know what I love about Raja is like, you can search the internet, this silhouette will be very hard to find. Like a lot of girls do references and I feel like Raja is the reference. Yeah. Like Raja is creating references. Okay, all of a sudden we look up and then the queen of the petty clap, Nancy Pelosi, speaker of the house, who is in I think like a five inch pump mm -hmm. in her 70s works the runway and does her own little speech. I would have gagged to see Nancy Pelosi there. I, I, I was gagging just seeing her back on the show again. It means so much to see someone of such importance in our country to come and give their blessing to our community yes. and to what we're doing. It is very important. And this is like the perfect episode to have Speaker Pelosi here. She's the third most like powerful person in politics. Yes. There's the president, vice president, and then Pelosi. Pelosi, yes. Yeah. Mistress of the shade clap. Yes. Was that Joe? Was that Joe? She's eight. What? This just in. What happened? Nancy Pelosi is not in her 70s. Bitch is 82. In four inch pumps. All when right. Nancy Pelosi was born, the Queen of England was like 10. You know, I feel like we should now measure all time in Nancy Pelosi. When ages. Nancy Pelosi was born, cheese wasn't even individually wrapped yet. And she looked good. Well, she didn't want to get red on stage. Oh my God. Nancy. So after the judge critiques, we find out that Raja and Jinx Monsoon are the top two all stars of the week. They have won two legendary legend stars, one to keep for themselves and one to give to another person. But RuPaul gives us one more little, one more little spin. She lets us know that they will not be giving out that star until the beginning of next week. So bitch, the sucking up has now started. There's gonna be more sucking than Michelle Visage in the locker room at the Mets. Wait, there's a locker room at the Met? I, the Mets. Mets, oh, a sports reference. <laughs> Do you agree with this top two? I agree. Obviously, like, Jinx was gonna was gonna slay. Yeah. But Raja really proved that she was picked on a, an original idea. Mm -hmm. She uh, it mm -hmm. stood out the most because it was very different from everyone else's commencement speeches. And then her runway was so f good. Jinx is now the first girl to have two legendary legend stars. Yeah. Oh my god, is she the? F She's the front runner. Wait, who's the first actor to win two Oscars? Was it Betty Davis? A what? Ask Raja, she was alive back then. I don't know. So they lip sync against each other. The song is Better In Color by Lizzo, um, which I, I don't think there was ever a scenario in life where we ever would have gotten to see Jinx do Better In Color. <laughs> I, I don't think it's in her uh, rep. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it was either in Raja's Yeah, I mean, they might, as well just, either. they might as well just had uh, Jinx uh, singing the police by <laughs> with attitude at this point. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? What is Jinx's, but, but she wins. She wins and well deserving. Like she was entertaining the entire time. She really made it her own. Mm -hmm. Like you can give her a drag lip sync song right? and she'll make it her own. Like, we so do cool. need to have a discussion about these outfits these girls are lip syncing in. This is, <sighs> <laughs> this is wild. Jinx is wearing a like 
suede leotard with like hiking boots with the boots that she just wears during the day <laughs> this is crazy i think that her performance was great that I didn't notice the shoes as much, but yeah, I did actually know I'm, I'm lying. I noticed the shoes. <laughs> Immediately. Immediately, because it didn't go with the outfit, but it didn't matter. Good for her, good for her. Here's my question to you, Minna Luzon. Are you a betting woman? Ooh, I usually lose at bets, so let's try it. Let's see if I lose Who again. Who is going to win All-Star 7 all winners season? Jinx Monsoon mm -hmm. or Shea kool -Aid. All right, there you have it. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Manila Luzon. You are a drag race royalty. You are absolutely remarkable, and um, it's a pleasure having you. And thank you all for watching at home. My name is Bob the Drag Queen. This has been The Pit Stop, and tune in next week, and we will be reviewing RuPaul's Drag Race All-Star 7, episode six. This is becoming a very vulgar episode of The Pit Stop. As it should. Welcome to The mm. Pit Stop. It's like a scratch and sniff episode. You we were just scratching this. Yeah, go thing. ahead. Sc scratch yes, the screen honey. and get a whiff of that. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. No, go ahead. Can we get a, yeah, this, this get crop. Get in there. Get in there. scratch your screen. And what does it smell yeah, like? It smells like a bacon cheeseburger with grilled onions. There you go. I love that.